Hey everyone, this is Josh with a super fun Bitcoin cryptography and software development tutorial for you today. In this video, we're doing a code companion for MicroBitAdder 2. This is a project that generates a offline Bitcoin wallet, uh, an address and private key using off the shelf hardware from Adafruit, some custom code and open source software. This project is actually a revamp of the original MicroBit Adder that I developed several years ago. I had the opportunity to speak about that project remotely at DEF CON's Blockchain Village and made several tutorials about the development process. This project generates a random Bitcoin private key and the associated address on a microcontroller with no network connection. So this theoretically gives us the kind of security that commercial hardware wallets like Trezor, Ledger, or KeepKey would give us. That said, this tutorial is for education and I wouldn't use it for any serious money um, because cryptography and security are difficult to get right. That said, everyone that started writing serious security, cryptography, and Bitcoin software started somewhere. And I love projects like this because they show what's possible when you sit down, tinker with code, cryptography, open source, and just learning how to do these types of things on your own. So let's talk about what it takes to develop your own offline Bitcoin address generator. This version of MicroBit Adder 2 is done in pure circuit Python. This was a long-term goal I had after I wrote the original MicroBit Adder, which used a combination of CircuitPython and C, compiling a custom uh, CircuitPython firmware for these Adafruit devices. One of the biggest challenges when writing Bitcoin software for small devices like this is finding libraries for the necessary cryptographic primitives. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, and all major cryptocurrencies require several cryptographic primitives for generating addresses. They make use of several hash functions as well as elliptic curve cryptography, and although not a cryptographic primitive in and of itself, um, different encoding schemes for turning the address into the characters that you see on the screen. Originally, I had a very hard time finding the necessary pure Python crypto libraries, but after some digging, I was able to find them for this project. In particular, I needed a library for SHA-256 hash function, which does happen to be included in the Adafruit bundles. I had to find RIPEMD160 hash function and an elliptic curve library that could do SecP256K1, the curve that Bitcoin uses. And finally, for a Bitcoin address, I needed a base58 library for the address encoding. In the future, like the original version of this product, uh, I would like to expand this project to support Litecoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, and any other potential cryptocurrencies that seem interesting. And all of those use slightly different encoding schemes. That said, for the basic Bitcoin address, I needed those libraries. And I was able to find, uh, slightly modify, and get those libraries running on this device. The other challenge, of course, that comes up is space constraints. These devices, although remarkably powerful for their size, um, do have a limited amount of memory and uh, code storage space compared to a normal computer or even a single board computer like the Raspberry Pi. So I had to do some optimization with the code and how it imports these libraries more on the fly uh, in order to be able to generate the addresses without running out of memory space. The original MicroBit Adder combined um, Trezor open source C code, my cryptography code to do the Bitcoin address generation, and then CircuitPython on the front end to make the calls to generate the address and display it. This version uses a pure Python library that I developed that calls those other cryptography libraries. 
So overall, both are fun and challenging ways to solve this problem, but the development environment is a little bit simpler now since you're only using Python. So let's dive into what it actually takes to generate a Bitcoin address. First, we have to start with random number generation. Any Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies private key must start from a cryptographically secure random source. Just using most programming languages built in random function is not enough for a secure private key. In this case, the Adafruit M4 line of microcontrollers um, do feature the ability to generate crypto secure random numbers. In Python, I called this using os.urandom, which is available on CircuitPython. Next, we can take that private key and encode it using the WIF or wallet import format for Bitcoin. This involves um, adding a prefix to the key, the key data, and then hash-based checksums. The next step to create the actual address itself involves um, elliptic curve cryptography, some hashing, and encoding. We take our private key data and use ECDSA to generate the associated public key. We again add some prefixes specific to Bitcoin along the way, we hash that data through two rounds, one of SHA-256 and one of RIPE MD-160, and then do some encoding into base 58 check. That base 58 encoding also includes some hashing with SHA-256 for a checksum, which is a couple characters at the end of the address that sort of validate the rest of the data that you see on the screen. So if you make a typo, your wallet software will reject that address as invalid. Now, other cryptocurrencies that I may support in the future use slightly different schemes um, for deriving and encoding the addresses, but the steps are roughly the same. We generate a private key using our true random source. We encode the private key in some way so we can store it for later use. And we hash the public key and encode that for later use. Now, of course, the code for this is available on the Chain Tutorials GitHub, and it is free and open source licensed. So you can download this code and tinker it, uh, with it for yourself. You could try porting it to different microcontroller platforms, adding support for new cryptocurrencies, or just refactoring the library to your liking. Again, I think this project is a really neat example of how you can tinker with code. The folks that write Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency wallets um, are software engineers, just like you and me, or they're folks that code for hobbies and for any number of reasons. And so, you know, it takes a lot to be able to develop a secure, commercially available library, but you too can develop a simple library for generating addresses. It goes to show how powerful cryptocurrency technology is. If you have the knowledge of how the protocol works, anybody can write software that interacts with these open networks. So if you found this interesting and you're learning how to code, or you're a long-term software professional that wants to dive into Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies, cryptography, or anything else, I hope you found this tutorial interesting and informative. As always, thank you for learning something new with me today. And I hope you go out and tinker with some code too.